Hello everyone. We are happy to welcome you on our today's webinar with Tatiana Struk. Today we will talk about skills and knowledge in modern translation industry, developing understanding of profession itself and its tools. While we are waiting for the rest of the audience, please type any signs so uh, I will be able to know you can, can hear me well. So I can see pluses, uh, so let's go on. We are broadcasting this webinar on Facebook as well, so you can join us there. Follow our official Facebook page. Uh, you can see the link in the chat window now. We really appreciate your feedback and you're welcome to share, like or comment our live Facebook videos. We are also happy to let you know that we have already started to prepare for UTCAM 2019. The conference will take place on July 22nd, 28th, a whole week of presentations and courses on translation industry trends, open air networking in the pine forest on the riverbank, simply enjoying life and scenery. In order not to miss any news and, uh, about the upcoming conference and our pre-sale announcements, join this event on Facebook, you can see the link and we will keep you posted. We also remind you that we store the uh, UTSC webinars and speeches video uh, videos on our website utsc.eu in video section so you can always watch there any video you like for free. And you're always welcome to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We publish our video here too and you will receive notifications about the latest updates. Our today's meeting is uh, going to be hosted by me, Irina Wiese, UTAC PR Manager. And let me tell you a little bit more about our speaker. Tatiana Struk is a founder and CEO of Linguistic Center Translation and Localization Company, a lecturer and translation technology consultant of academia, an author of books on translation and an advocate for professional growth in the translation and localization industry. She is a regular speaker at uh, international and local conferences and Titiana is a good friend of UT Camp. She joined the conference from the very beginning in 2013 and still supports it as a member of program committee, speaker and moderator. We're happy to have such a good friend. It's time for me to turn it over to our speaker. Tatiana, how are you? But before I do that, I want to ask all of you guys to send um, questions in the chat window. We will uh, ask them at the end of the presentation. Tatiana, hello. Hello. Can hello. you hear me? Uh, we can't see you. Yes, uh -huh. we hear you, but we can't see you. Yes, hello. Hello, Tatiana. hello. hello. Uh, great to see you uh, here today and uh, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm really happy to have the chance to share my experience uh, in uh, a translator's training and uh, to tell you uh, more about um, my thoughts and my ideas, how to adapt to changes in the industry and how to incorporate these changes uh, into training of translators. And uh, I'm I hope that uh, it will be really uh, interesting and uh, nice uh, as all uh, UTIC webinars and meetings. And I'll be happy uh, to tell you more uh, during the UTIC camp. And I hope to see all of you there. Probably a couple of words uh, more about uh, myself. I've been running a translation uh, company for uh, 21 years. Uh, and, of course, I witnessed, uh, witnessed a lot of changes uh, in the industry. I saw uh, that uh, huge developments and uh, my work uh, in the beginning of that process and now could not even be <laughs> compared. Uh, so uh, at a certain point, uh, I found out that we need to train um, more translators according to the modern requirements of the industry. Uh, so, so I did, uh, and then I saw that this industry unites a lot of interesting people, and I wanted to share uh, that knowledge. So, 
uh, my colleagues and me uh, created some uh, nice books uh, describing the profession of uh, translator. And this year, I uh, also published a, a course book, uh, university course book, in a translation for translators training. And where can I uh, just uh, move to the next slide? <laughs> Uh, so, as I told, the industry has changed significantly uh, during the years, and uh, we now can see uh, that uh, artificial intelligence is growing, and at the uh, last, last uh, uh, Translating Europe forum that happened only a couple of days ago in Brussels, uh, speakers actually mentioned that uh, that would be the new skill translators should uh, develop, uh, the ability to work with artificial intelligence. Uh, nobody uh, can understand how at the moment, but still it is considered a next skill. Like machine translation is growing, is changing, uh, and we need to um, actually is developing so quickly that at the same uh, forum, it was declared that statistical machine translation is dead. Uh, so we really need to, to run fast uh, to move to the with the latest developments. Digital technologies are uh, developing speech recognition, video content. So all that things uh, are really uh, influencing uh, the profession now. And we face uh, the uh, new challenges. If we can move to the next slide, please, uh, that uh, we never faced uh, before. So these are really huge volumes in, uh, uh, of translation uh, of content that we, it's not only text uh, anymore. So uh, a lot of new content, a lot of new formats, uh, like every half a year developing something new. Uh, the, what we need to translate or, or to pr process uh, in no time practically uh, using a variety of technologies uh, and really being sensitive to all cultural aspects, to making that content uh, local. And uh, uh, that's why it, it like, uh, produces new challenges for uh, our industry. Uh, there is also uh, a challenge in a, a change in a translator's uh, portrait. Uh, so nowadays, translator is definitely a team player. Uh, it's not uh, some lonely hermit who works uh, uh, on his own on, or on her own. Uh, so we are part of a team. Uh, we really uh, need to understand uh, the responsibility of, of what we are doing, uh, that role of uh, quality. We need to uh, be able to embrace technologies, uh, to be open to all the changes uh, uh, because some, sometimes uh, we really uh, see uh, translators who try to keep to, to that old procedures. Uh, however, the industry nowadays uh, do, not, um, do not give uh, uh, us the opportunity uh, to keep to old values of translation, to old pros. And um, the scope, uh, so if we'll uh, consider some um, job offers in the profession, uh, we could see that uh, the scope of titles is uh, so different that um, we need to, uh, we could hardly find actually the word translator here. And of course, um, like when we uh, face uh, the standard uh, mode of uh, translators training at the academia, uh, we see that translators are trained mostly to be, to be translators when they enter the industry and if they enter the industry, just because uh, a lot of students don't think that it is something interesting in that old school translation uh, that they uh, see. Uh, so if they enter the industry, uh, they cannot find uh, the application of their skills they were taught in academia. And um, they feel frustration, and I can understand them, uh, that um, we need, uh, they face that uh, necessity to use some non-standard approach, to work with, in teams, uh, to have that uh, technical knowledge. And uh, of course, um, 
or their expertise, uh, the uh, need, their expertise they need is, uh, could, could we move to the next slide, please? Uh, that uh, linguistic um, capacity, of course, it's like that hard skill that we have, uh, like cultural understanding, and of course, uh, technical understanding of uh, uh, all these issues in uh, profession. There are a lot of different forecasts and predictions uh, in the industry. Could we move on, please? Uh, and um, I, uh, I visit a lot of conferences. I read all these materials. I talk to people uh, who actually influence uh, the development of the industry. And what I can uh, see that uh, actually um, uh, all these people, all these reports, uh, they state that changes uh, come quicker uh, than we expected them to come, uh, that um, they are really unpredictable because at, the, at this uh, latest European uh, forum, uh, all these predictions were even called like uh, sort of a speculation uh, just because Frankly speaking, we cannot predict the development of the industry. Nobody can. Uh, so um, what we uh, can try to do uh, now is to train ourselves or train our students to be like a multi-skilled uh, translator, uh, to, to evolve them to, to do a lot of things uh, at the same time, a lot of different things they never done before. Uh, so. As we see that uh, like technology is changing, uh, processes are changing, services are changing, a lot of new services appear nowadays. So um, we we need uh, to adapt to, to this, to to act like a chameleon, just to um, uh, reflect these changes. And what um, like uh, I see really expedient to do is uh, to develop some and to train in students uh, some transferable skills in this changing industry, just because it won't be honest uh, to prepare them only to, to that like, uh, uh, imaginary industry uh, that we uh, think about. So I think that uh, there are a lot of really um, neighboring uh, industries, neighboring jobs, neighboring uh, fields, uh, where we can uh, actually work having the uh, education in a translation, uh, even having the experience of freelance translation, in freelance translation. Uh, so we, uh, these transferable skills are really something that um, I think uh, is really important that uh, um, skills of studying independently, skills to uh, seek information, to take responsibility, uh, to uh, make decisions, uh, to work in teams. That is something uh, that we need to learn and uh, to, to develop in ourselves. Of course, uh, it's like uh, some <laughs> basic knowledge about skills that we need uh, to develop. And uh, both of these uh, skill sets are really necessary in training. That uh, hard skills, it's like basic knowledge traditionally taught uh, in academia and uh, something that we could measure, something that we could teach our students. And um, it's like that knowledge of uh, uh, technology, knowledge of, of course, knowledge of language, uh, knowledge of uh, uh, industry or some specialized translation. Uh, it, it, it definitely should be taught. Uh, but uh, what I think is really important, probably in the first place, in that um, conditions of uncertainty uh, and this condition of, of change, that uh, I think that soft skills are really more important in uh, in that uh, environment. So that is something that uh, is hard to measure. Uh, that you need uh, probably you can teach them, but uh, you need to develop them in yourself. You need to acquire these skills, and we like uh, teachers or trainers of uh, translation should uh, create that um, 
environment uh, for students to develop these skills. That is something like uh, problem solving, emotional intelligence, or these presentation skills, uh, time management skills, leadership, communication. All these skills could be really used and useful in all neighboring uh, fields, in all neighboring um, professions and uh, in these uh, overlapping professions. So when we are not only translators, we are translators plus something else. If we'll compare uh, their uh, scheme, how translators were taught in uh, European universities according to European masters uh, in translation program, if we'll compare the old version, 10 years ago, uh, we could see uh, that um, competencies that were mentioned uh, there and described there and how curriculums were formed according to these competencies. So this uh, year ago, the new version actually included different competencies. And uh, now uh, it also has that personal and interpersonal competence that is considered really very important in, uh, in the training, in the profile of a modern uh, translator. What is covered in uh, this new EMT uh, program guidelines of training uh, a translator, uh, these soft skills are covered by um, planning time management, uh, stress management, uh, work and life balance, uh, deadlines, uh, instructions, uh, uh, adapting to the rules of organization where you work, uh, capabilities or to work in teams, uh, that self-evaluation skills and uh, skills of self-presentation and so skills of uh, using social media for your professional purposes. That was something that uh, was never um, mentioned in previous uh, curriculums of uh, translators training. And it's not only the translation uh, industry feels uh, that necessity. Uh, LinkedIn uh, report uh, this year mentioned that soft skills are number one priority in uh, the for talent development. Uh, uh, Bloomberg and Workday report also mentions that uh 75 percent of long-term job success depends on your developed soft skills uh the uh one more really very important report uh on the industry deloitte says economics said that uh soft skills uh occupation will account for two sets of all jobs just in 10 years or 12 years and uh, there is also a nice uh, report from uh, like Oxford scholars uh, that in the next ten, five to ten years will need all that skills uh, of relationship building, theming, and things like this. So when we are moving uh, that translation industry only to limiting that translation industry only to technologies, we forget that translation industry is always about people. So it's like people-driven uh, industry, and we, we need to, to understand the importance of uh, these skills there. Like, returning to translation industry, we can uh, see that the Taos report also uh, mentioned that we should not compete with machines. Uh, we need to use our strongest skills, just uh, like human skills, uh, to uh, cooperate with machines and uh, that we easily uh, even like putting uh, all uh, everything on the card of technology uh, we can really uh, become obsolete and our skills could become obsolete really very quick so in uh, that highly automated localization environment all these human skills are uh, presented by uh, content profiling by quality evaluation cultural aspects that no machine can actually help us with, um, data analysis, computational linguistics. So a lot of uh, things, a lot of areas where we can act, uh, where we can be strong, where we can be efficient and not uh, feeling uh, ourselves outside of, of the general profile. Uh, 
as uh, I told, I, uh, I'm teaching uh, translation technologies for many, many years. And my uh, way in this teaching um, progressed and changed. And actually, it, uh, I change it every year. So I add something uh, to my course. And when uh, many, many years ago, it, uh, it was about only uh, teaching CAD tools. Uh, then at a certain point, I saw that industry needs people uh, who can provide quality assurance. So I added quality assurance uh, module there. Uh, then uh, I've added project manager module uh, to, to that course. Uh, then I saw that uh, future requires, uh, not future, present actually requires um, skills in post editing. Uh, so I've added uh, this uh, module uh, as well. And uh, two years ago, it developed, um, it was developed into the course that actually, so though it's formally, it uh, doesn't have uh, that title, but the essence of the course is like developing of language solutions, so preparing language solution specialists uh, that could um, work uh, within, uh, within the industry. We uh, actually, uh, the, the skill set developed during this course is uh, team building and collaboration skills. It's uh, problem solving skills, strategy building skills, and all these skills, they form the framework for the development of uh, technology skills. So the uh, course uh, actually um, consists of, um, it begins from that introduction to oral and written communication, uh, then moves to uh, language industry uh, and trends, the uh, description of these trends. Then we work with uh, language technologies and uh, actually we cover a lot of them. It's not only CAT tools, uh, students uh, do a lot of independent uh, work, they work with uh, subtitling, they work with uh, uh, different types of software that is used in the translation process. Uh, there is a huge uh, module of self-studying where our students take uh, individually uh, online courses uh, of uh, different, uh, in different subjects. And it's really something um, uh, nice and efficient, so uh, I, I like the result of it. Uh, then we deal with uh, machine translation and post-editing. We're analyzing the different uh, types of post-editing, the results of uh, machine translation, uh, comparing them, so we, we really talk a lot. Uh, uh, students are uh, involved at the same time in a, a translation project, in translation project where they learned how to work with terminology, uh, how to uh, provide quality assurance, uh, how to uh, create the timeline of the project. And uh, they uh, also um, they try to uh, work with the different types of content. So it could be localization of a website or localization of uh, some uh, um, uh, for example, um, toy that uh, teaches uh, kids how to code. So it was a robot and we provided the localization of uh, their software interface and marketing materials there. So a lot of um, various content. So they are not afraid of uh, dealing with various formats. And uh, I like this. Then we move to that um, uh, understanding and developing project uh, maps and uh, defining toolbox, uh, like uh, trying to uh, develop translation approaches depending on the content. Uh, and uh, it, it's really something useful. And we also cover some uh, job search, career development, and professional ethics uh, aspects. Uh, so uh, that uh, approach showed me that we can uh, really help students you flexibly use uh, technologies uh, and in general we cover like about 15 to 20 different types of technologies during the course. They, are, they uh, do not afraid anymore 
uh, to look for information. Uh, they do not afraid to work with uh, new services. Uh, so it's like uh, uh, localization, subtitling, uh, post editing, uh, a lot of various services. And um, it gives them that understanding of the industry and Mostly what I think uh, the, the most important thing here is that it keeps uh, people in the profession. It keeps students in the profession. They, they are interested. They see opportunities. Uh, they uh, find themselves in uh, different uh, startups after that or different companies. That's how we work. And for uh, teachers uh, who, are, who, is interested in, uh, who are interested in, with the, in the approach, um, I can say that, um, like uh, everyone, we should not be like specialists in every skill. Students understand that they can get basics and they uh, can develop afterwards if they are interested in one special uh, service or one special uh, trend. So they see the direction, they got inspired, and they move on. Uh, so uh, what we uh, have, what we uh, do with students. We have a lot of different types of presentations because this is something very important nowadays. Uh, now they also create videos and I published them the first bunch recently and the next uh, is following in a couple of days. They do uh, a lot of self-studying. Uh, we talk a lot, we discuss a lot, we analyze a lot and that's uh, where I see the most uh, important part of uh, their course. We have really strict deadlines and students got used to that really quickly and efficiently. So they know that after 8 p.m. this day, you cannot submit your task, like in real life uh, sometimes. Uh, we also create teams and practice uh, different uh, f formats of presentation. So it could be uh, from uh, standard presentation to Pecha Kucha and on conference. And what I uh, saw previous summer with no, this summer with students that uh, these skills could be really transferable. So when we uh, just uh, had that idea of creating uh, the a book of uh, interviews with successful Ukrainian translators, um, I was probably like mm, the initiator uh, of the task and everything else was done purely by students so they got all that skills in um, scheduling tasks in uh, um, like in um, creating uh, in distributing roles in collecting information contacting with uh, translators so in the result we've got a book uh, and it means uh, that these skills which were trained during uh, the course uh, were uh, used in the um, in separate inside project, but, but they were used efficiently. So I think uh, it would be considered a success. Uh, so uh, what uh, I think is help, could help us, whether we are uh, students, teachers, or uh, freelancers, uh, is that. Um, transferable skills framework that unites uh, like uh, interpersonal skills, uh, implementation skills, and self-management skills. Like in um, communi interpersonal skills, it's definitely uh, communication when you could uh, really uh, speak clearly, confidently, uh, bring your idea uh, to the floor, negotiate uh, things, sell your idea, and uh, then um, teamwork when you can cooperate with different people and identify their strengths, weaknesses. It was something that uh, was not, it was uh, some, um, uh, some idea that was new to students <laughs> that you need to analyze people with whom you work and how to use their best qualities uh, for cooperation, leadership, uh, Taking responsibility, I hear I see the leadership when you feel responsible, when you recognize the efforts of others, when you feel like uh, that uh, team and where you can motivate others uh, to move on. Researching and um, 
uh, analyzing. Uh, so when you are open the, to new ideas where you can find information and um, then solve uh, the problems that appear uh, and um, actually translate uh, that ideas into specific actions. What we uh, also can uh, see here uh, of uh, some important features if uh, are skills in self-management. Uh, it's like when you um, you can learn on your own, uh, when you can uh, adhere to specific uh, procedures, uh, when you can adapt to difference to uh, what is changing, uh, when you can act on your own initiative. Um, and uh, I think that developing digital skills, I don't mean technology, translation technology here, uh, I mean digital skills like uh, using even emails efficiently, uh, creating videos, uh, using um, social media, and uh, all other types of technologies to develop um, yourself in this profession is really something. Um, important and then when uh, you move to uh, the next step having acquired all this uh, framework of skills that could help you to move uh, further to uh, actually um, to acquire new skills you can acquire that hard skills that are also very important but you are not uh, actually um, tied to that uh, hard skills that are imposed uh, to you by, for example, academia, you are, you are absolutely free uh, to acquire new skills using uh, different uh, resources. Like, for example, uh, we can uh, start here in uh, post editing. There are a lot of different resources at Taos uh, website. Uh, Post editing course uh, of Taos uh, SVL uh, certification course in post editing is also uh, really very nice. And uh, like students, for example, were taking uh, the courses, uh, were developing the skills. If they saw that post editing is something, uh, looks something interesting to them, uh, uh, develop uh, localization, they could find uh, other resources. Uh, for that, for example, uh, it was a part of the course uh, to take uh, the localization essentials by Google course. Uh, it was something that they uh, took uh, on their own, but uh, it was a part of our uh, training. Another course in uh, website localization and different uh, prosy uh, courses would be really used in uh, training of yourself or training of your students so just don't be afraid to to add that uh, online training uh, developed by professional to make the skills deeper and it's an efficient way uh, to train to train yourself and to train your students or the visual translation we know that video is booming and nowadays we, we have a lot of requests from our clients, and I think that this direction is something where students should be trained, just because like, video is a new text <laughs> in uh, our industry. So uh, we uh, like it's an obligatory task to uh, you to work uh, with uh, uh, TED Open Translation Project, so to subtitle videos there uh, to to try you can select your video and it's really a, a great um, advantage for the course because students get that basic information about site subtitling and if they are interested they are also can uh, they also can uh, move on with uh, actually uh, developing their knowledge and skills in uh, subtitling there are a lot of uh, different uh, types of uh, schools uh, it's uh, like School of Audiovisual Translation uh, uh, by Alexei Kazuliaev, so where you can have the basics of uh, audiovisual, not, not only the basics, like uh, a lot of uh, information in audiovisual translation. There are a lot of summer schools uh, in audiovisual translation and uh, online courses. 
Uh, but still, within the course, we can include, we could consider uh, the basics and then uh, move on. We know that probably uh, those of us who work with students know that they dream about uh, translating books. So they see the profession of translator like the translator of books. What I, uh, I always try to <laughs> pick up that students interested in this. Nowadays, we also have that uh, possibility to, to translate actually books because uh, translation uh, is of that type of uh, text is uh, flourishing in uh, Ukraine. But uh, still, uh, I uh, try to show them that uh, other side uh, of um, that profession, that you can apply that skills, uh, that creativity in uh, transcreation, in, for example, in translation of video games, and in, uh, well, in different types of translation, it shouldn't be only books. So you could uh, apply them in various uh, areas, and like we try to, um work uh, with uh, transcreation it's uh, not only uh, all translate all students are interested actually in this direction not all students uh, can have that abilities to work in uh, with transcreation but still uh, if uh, we have uh, people who are interested in this uh, direction there are also various types of resources uh, that can could help uh, you to uh, develop uh, that skill. And um, what I uh, would like to uh, like to, to mention uh, in the end uh, is uh, that of course uh, when we work with uh, training of translators, we could not prepare them uh, in the academia for their lifelong career. So it's it's absolutely impossible. And actually, what we learned. Uh, w w people who are now working in the industry, that was probably um, some uh, skills that we gained on our own. Uh, and uh, it means that uh, all students, all new uh, newbies in the industry could also gain these skills the same way we got them. So I see uh, the main idea of training of translators is to in, in uh, teaching to how to learn, how to, how to teach yourself. It's really something uh, that uh, we could equip new translators with uh, just to uh, survive in the industry, uh, first to stay in the industry and then to survive in the industry. A and it gives them strengths uh, to develop. So changes happening quickly in the industry. So uh, we, we need to adapt like all these chameleons really but try. For example, uh, I'm sure there, there, there are a lot of uh, academic programs in uh, uh, post editing that, was that were based on statistical machine translation. So till the moment the students will graduate, this knowledge would be really obsolete. Uh, if we'll focus on one, for example, software, uh, on one CAT tool with students, probably till the moment uh, uh, students graduate, uh, it will change completely. So there are uh, really uh, practically no time. We need to adapt on, on the fly, on fly just uh, to, to the changes. Uh, we don't uh, need to be really deep specialists in the subject because students can learn by themselves if they're interested. So our task is to make them interested in the subject. Of course, you need to uh, make, uh, to find the priorities uh, in the skills you want to develop and uh, dedicate time to, to that. And these skills are also like covered by that soft skills. So if you uh, uh, didn't de develop that soft skills for, for that development, you could not could not move on. Um, just do not postpone. If you're afraid of starting some new service or in, uh, if you're afraid of uh, adding new skills to your portfolio, just don't be. Because uh, services, again, are changing so quickly that there are only like 
few real specialists, deep specialists in the industry, and you can adapt easily. So the uh, most experienced post editor is told uh, they have five years of experience nowadays or six years of experience. So it means that you could put your foot uh, in that door easily uh, at every uh, moment. And you, of course, can uh, learn by doing just because we, have, we are in a practical profession and we, that's the only way how we can learn things and uh, don't wait to until we achieve the perfect knowledge and perfect skills. And this is a, a photo from uh, that Translating Europe forum uh, recent. And we can see that like the most, one of the uh, uh, most important notions in uh, of, of this forum was uh, that adaptation. So everyone understands that uh, there are no set rules that we uh, need to um, we need to adapt. We need to change ourselves quickly, and we can we can do it. We can do it. And as I don't know, uh, like <laughs> who is in the room uh, now, if uh, we have some uh, teachers of uh, translation, uh, I would be really uh, happy uh, to to share the more detailed uh, information on the course. Uh, to consult how to implement uh, uh, that uh, services, that uh, notions into uh, your existing course, uh, just please contact me and like contact me with any questions uh, that you have. And uh, I like that uh, words uh, that actually reflect the idea of us like being chameleons. Uh, that uh, it's not the most intellectual who survives or strongest, but survives those uh, who could adapt to or adjust. So that's our role now. That's our task now. And uh, I think that we can do it. And I'm open to questions. If we have uh, Tatiana, thank you so much for an informative speech. Very sure information uh, will be useful not only for teachers or students, but also for translators who make the first steps in the industry and just want to fine tune their knowledge and skills. So we have time for a couple of questions and I uh, switch to your webcam mm -hmm. so we can see you. Hi again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have some questions. Uh, so the millennials. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes, what has changed in teaching and studying? Some people say young people are lazier and they forgot how to sit in libraries. Uh, but some say they think faster and they have a higher EQ. And um, what do you think? Which advantages do they have? And what would you advise uh, us uh, in working with young people? I am a huge fan of millennials. <laughs> really, really uh, recently uh, I had uh, the presentation at the uh, earlier conference about millennials. And uh, there, there are a number of uh, advantages. So I worked with different say, generations of uh, students. And I really uh, enjoy uh, how uh, this um, uh, these young people uh, can uh, um, apply. Uh, so they don't see, uh, they don't have boundaries. Uh, they uh, can uh, really adjust easily. If you give them the detailed instructions, they ca can create something uh, absolutely unexpected. Uh, they also work with, um, if they are interested, they, they need to have purpose. Uh, for example, when we uh, um, work with our projects, that's the main aim of the project. That project shouldn't be something like abstract uh, uh, when somebody, nobody actually needs it. It should be something really a very, um, like not very important, but important to, to someone. Like when um, students are localizing now the website uh, Humans of New York, 
uh, they contacted the author, they, he, the, the owner, he replied. So they uh, translate it just because they want to share in Ukraine the information that is written there. Uh, so uh, they need to, when they see purpose, they can make miracles, absolute miracles. So <laughs> you just uh, don't need to direct them, to control them. They, they actually can control themselves and uh, create a great results. I think I think that we could um, learn a lot from that generation, and I would like to to uh, well to, to be in their position, so to say, nowadays belonging to different generations. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. So we have another question. Uh, in your opinion, so which profession will disappear first, a translator or a project manager? I don't think that any of these professionals will disappear, so uh, they'll definitely stay, uh, both of them, but uh, they, um, they'll they change. Uh, I'm sure that probably in five years we can see that uh, both these professions change significantly, uh, and um, but they won't, they won't disappear uh, as it is. And in this, if, if, we mentioned that the, the negative <laughs> prognosis of focus of this uh, probably like um, translator will disappear faster <laughs> than project manager. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And uh, now the question uh, is uh, uh, in a uh, post-Soviet education, which is more effective is self-education or we will have some kind of uh, a good academia soon? I don't know whether, I think uh, that uh, actually this profession nowadays probably uh, don't demand academia. <laughs> uh, probably it's, uh, it could sound strange, uh, but uh, we can see a lot of um, uh, successful examples of translators who don't have that uh, education in translation, but still they are successful. Uh, and uh, I don't think that academia can actually uh, follow the changes efficiently. So it's probably uh, giving that um, hard skills knowledge uh, is the role of academia. But there is a, um, so to say, negative uh, moment there uh, that giving when uh, these millennials see only hard skills in this profession. They actually don't stay in the profession. Uh, that's why uh, probably um, like combining uh, that um, hard skills plus probably some online trainings and some communication with the industry is uh, the best result. Uh, either academia will change absolutely or, or there will be no need for academia in this profession. Well, so sorry for for, for that uh, probably some strong uh, conclusion. But it, that's what I see at the moment. Thank you. And uh, the last thing is, uh, if you had a chance to uh, say some advice uh, to all students, all linguistic students, uh, so what would you say? Uh, that's something that I always <laughs> tell my students uh, that. Uh, like just do it try it uh when you are uh, still a student or when you're new in profession you have that great advantage of uh, not being uh, inside of some box so you could uh, try a lot of different things just to try to to <laughs> try to try everything uh try to see what is interesting to you because this profession nowadays often offers so many opportunities it's really uh, i could not even uh, understand what i would uh, grasp if i were 20 years now so uh, that's why I just try it use everything taste everything because uh, that world has every a lot of uh, to offer you so just do it and think yes, of it. Yes. <laughs> thank you uh thank you very much for answering the questions and uh, dear attendees if you have other questions please send them in the facebook event 
we will ask Tatiana uh, to answer them too and we don't say goodbye well actually we say goodbye today but not for so long because Tatiana will be a moderator in our next webinar so goodbye for now and I have just a couple of slides here and it's, yes it's about this the webinar uh, it will take place on November 20 of 29th at 4 p.m. Our guest Tatiana Struk, uh, Kirill Fedotov, Yuri Tverkun, and uh, Mikhail Yipanov will discuss some hot topics of the industry, will share their experience on how to stay on top. And join us, so the registration is already open on our website. If you miss us, you can always find our social media list uh, at the end of uh, uh, every video description. And we want to say, say thank you to our UTCAM 2019 and UTIC webinar sponsors and partners. Um, it's translation companies uh, Language Solution Pro, uh, Logros Global and Logros IT as well as our Belarusian translation forum. Our next live UT camp will be held on 22nd, 28th in 2019th. We will be glad to see, to see all of you and uh, we are happy to have our steady partners and uh, friends. We also kindly ask you to give us some feedback. Here is a form. You can see it in the chat now. Let us know your opinion about this webinar. And we don't say goodbye as we will already meet you in two weeks. See you.